Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at this problem that is called word search. And let's just start off by understanding what the problem says. So you're given a 2D board and a word, and you have to find if that word exists in a grid. The word can be constructed from the letters of sequentially adjacent cells, where adjacent cells are those horizontally or vertically neighboring. The same letter may not be used more than once. So for instance, you've been given a board here and you have to check for a given word, let's say A, B, C, C, E, D. So we see that if you start off at the first index, you have A, then in the adjacent cell, you have B, and then in another adjacent cell, you have C, then you have C again, then you have C, uh, then you have E again, and then you have D. So you can see that the A, B, C, C, E, D exists in the given matrix right so this word does exist while if you try to check for a b c b you would not be able to construct that word and you have to note that you can only move in horizontal or vertical directions you cannot move diagonally so if you have any idea about graph traversal this is a pretty easy problem this is a basic dfs implementation all you need to do is perform a dfs on any node uh, that qualifies to uh, actually act as a starting point for finding this word for instance if any of the uh, of the elements in the matrix actually are equal to the first element of the given word you uh, you will say that you can actually start looking for that word in that from that position onwards and if that position if that entire word exists you will return true if the word fails to exist you will continue on looking at other positions in the matrix so uh, this is a basic uh, DFS or backtracking implementation. All you need to do uh, is, in the algorithm, all you need to do is select a node which qualifies to be the starting point for your word, uh, which would basically mean that if the value of a particular element is equal to the starting element of your word, then you can start performing DFS there and you can start checking on that element. Now, let's say we are looking for this word A, B, C, C, E, D. And you uh, start off at the first index in the uh, matrix, which will be 0, 0. So you check and you see that the first element of the word and the element that we are currently scanning are equal. You say that, all right, these match. So we can start performing a DFS. Let's say we the first direction that we decide to go into is the vertical direction. We go, to, we go vertically downwards from this point. So we go to this point. We check S. Now... We've already checked the first element. Now we check for the second match. We see that S is not equal to the second element of B, right? So we'll say that this is an invalid node. And once you hit an invalid node, you simply backtrack back to your previous level of recursion. So you say that S, is, S turns out to be a negative, uh, uh, an invalid node. So you simply backtrack back to A. Now you start exploring the other possibilities. The next possibility for another path in the solution space would be to move towards the right hand side, towards the B node. So you move to this node and you start checking, is this node a valid node? You see that the second uh, node, the second element in the word, as well as this node have the same value, which is B. So you say that this is a valid node. And uh, you say that, yeah, we can start exploring all the other possibilities. So you let's say you again, First, uh, you again decide to go in the downward direction. First, you see that uh, this time you encounter the node F. And does F equal to, this is the third node that we are, this is the third level of recursion that we are in. This is the third node that we are exploring in the current path. So you see, is this current node equal to the third element in the word? It is not. It's F is not equal to C. So you say that F turns out to be an invalid node and you'll backtrack back to the previous level of recursion so you come back to b now you explore the other uh, possible route which will be to go towards the right hand side and check c now if c uh, does c match with the third element of the word it does and you'll say that c is equal to c so this is a valid node and all you need to do is simply continue ahead into the further levels of recursion to check for the rest of the elements so let's say we are here at c and uh, you again decide to check the uh, go in the uh, vertically downward direction first. You see that you encounter C again, and the fourth letter of the word that you are currently checking for 
is also C. So you say that this again turns out to be a valid node and you can continue further on looking for the rest of the world on this path. So you let's say you again uh, from this node you go further and you again check in the down vertically downward direction. First you say that you reach E. You check is the fifth letter in the given word equal to E. If it is, this will be a valid node. And we see that E does match with the fifth letter in the given word, which is E. So you say that this is a valid node and you can continue uh, searching on this current given path. So what you do is simply uh, start uh, traversing the tree from this point onwards, this graph this point onwards, and you first of all see if you can go downwards. You can't go downwards because uh, there is no space to go downwards. You try going to the right and you see that the, uh, when you go to the right, you encounter E. Is this E equal to the sixth element in your word, which is D? It's not. So you'll say that this is an invalid node and you'll need to backtrack back to the previous level of recursion. So you get back to E. Now you let's say you explore the other possibility, which is to go towards the left. You go towards the left and encounter D. And you'll say that I encountered D, which was a valid element. And you'll say that this does match uh, with the last element of our given word. So you simply return true that you have found the word and you return true. And you catch that true in your main function. And you simply return a true from that function as well because you have been uh, successful in finding the word in your given matrix, right? So this is a basic DFS implementation and this should not take a lot of time and uh, we'll just uh, quickly run through how to implement this entire thing in code. I'll be using C++. So let's get started with implementing this in code. So the first thing that I need to do is simply start traversing through this entire graph and check for check each node if it's a valid starting point for our DFS. So I'll simply write a nested for loop for int i equal to zero while i is smaller than uh, board dot size uh, plus plus i for int j equal to zero while j is smaller than board zero dot size plus plus j and if that is the case we'll check if the current node has the same value as the first letter of the target word. So if, if that is the case, we can start performing a DFS. So I'll just check if the current node is in fact uh, equal to the first letter of the target word. If that's the case, I'll simply check if uh, the DFS on this node returns true, which will mean if we perform a DFS on this node and we start looking for the entire word, if this returns true, it would mean that this is a valid answer. This is a valid solution. So we'll simply return true if the DFS returns true. So I'll simply write if DFS, we'll pass some stuff into this. If this returns true, then we'll return true in our main function as well, in the calling function as well, right? Now let's decide what all we need to send in this uh, DFS function. The first thing that we'll be sending will be the board itself. Then we'll send the word we'll send the current indices of the board that we're exploring as well. So I'll write I and J and we will write the current character uh, that we are exploring the corresponding character to, to the current node in the graph as well. So the current index that we are exploring. So we'll start off with index zero and then we'll move on to index one, two and three so that we know which index we are looking for in the given word, right? In the, uh, in the given word, right? So uh, yeah, that is done. And if this doesn't run in any of the conditions, we'll simply return false at the end of this calling function. Right. So now what we need to do is we need to write the implementation for the DFS. So this will be a Boolean DFS. The uh, board is a vector of vectors of type char. And we'll pass this by reference. So I will add an ampersand sign and I'll call this board. Now the second thing will be the string. We won't be changing the string so we can actually pass this as a constant and pass this by reference as well to avoid uh, useless copies. And I'll call this word. The next uh, parameter will be called i, the other one will be called j, and the final one will be called int idx. idx meaning the current index for the, the word that we are exploring. 
All right, so now the first thing that we need to do is to check if the current node that we're exploring is a valid node. So let's list down all the possible invalid cases and return a false if any of those conditions is true. So if i is smaller than zero, that will be invalid. If j is smaller than zero, that will be invalid as well. If i overshoots the boundaries, that will be invalid as well. So I'll just write board dot size. And if j overshoots the boundaries at any point, that will be invalid. So I'll write board zero dot size. And the last one would be to see if the current uh, corresponding node and the corresponding letter in the given word don't match. So if uh, board of i comma j is not equal to the corresponding letter in the given word, which will be represented by the uh, index idx. So if this is the case, this is again an invalid node. And in all of these cases, we'll simply return false. Right. Now, we need to also check in case the current, uh, we need to write a base condition as well where our recursion will stop. So if we are checking the last element of the uh, target word, if we are checking the last index of the target word, and that is that turns out to be equal to the current node in the board, we'll say that we have found the entire word, we are at the last character and that matched, we'll simply return back a true. So we'll simply say if uh, idx equal to equal to word dot size minus one. This is the last uh, valid index in the word. And this is the current index that we were exploring. So if we are at the last index, then we'll say that we found the entire word. So we'll return true. You already checked for the equality because in case it wasn't equal, this would have returned false. So we already know that these two are equal, right? So the next thing that we want to do is we want to mark this current node as visited because we don't want to visit this node once again, because as it says, the same letter may not be used more than once, and we don't want to get stuck in an infinite loop. So we'll simply mark this current node as visited. So one very easy way to do that is to simply replace it with a special character. And before we replace this with a special character, let's just cache the value of the current node as well, so that later we can put it back. So we'll just say char temp equal to the current value, board i comma j, then what we need to do is simply replace this current value board i comma j with a special character, let's say a pound sign. So I'll write that. Right, so we have marked this node as visited. So if we ever visit this node again, and we see that this current uh, node is not equal to the corresponding letter in the given word, because we'll never have the pound symbol in the word. So this will automatically check for that. So if this is the case, we'll simply return false and we won't explore further. So we marked this as visited. Now we need to explore further on. So the possible directions we can go is simply towards the right, towards the left, towards the bottom or towards the top. So I'll define all these movements in two uh, arrays, which will basically be the possible values, the next possible values for i and j. So I'll write int move i this will be an array equal to 0 comma 0 comma 1 comma minus 1, right? I'll just add these spaces, right? And the second uh, movement array will be move j. This will be equal to 1 comma minus 1 comma 0 comma 0. So if you look at the corresponding values in both these arrays, th there will be 0 and 1, which will mean we'll add 0 to the uh, ith index and one to the jth index. Uh, that will simply mean that we are moving one step towards the right. If we look at the other value, we have zero and minus one. This will mean we add zero to the ith index and j, uh, minus one to the current jth index, which will move the pointer towards the left hand side of the current node. Similarly, if we have one and zero, that would mean we are moving in the downward direction. For instance, if you are at this point, i plus one will mean you're moving the lower direction. And j plus zero will mean we won't change the column. So this will simply define all the possible movements that you can make from the current position. So we'll just run a for loop through all of these positions for int i, uh, not i, let's say k equal to zero, while k is smaller than four plus plus k. What you need to do is call the DFS on all of these positions. So we'll call DFS, we'll actually check for the DFS, if the DFS returns true, we'll just say if DFS, 
and we will send the board send the word we'll write i plus move i and the corresponding k similarly j plus move j and the corresponding k again and idx plus one because now we will be exploring the further indices and we already had a match at the current index because we reached till this point we'll simply continue on looking for the rest of the indices from uh, from this point onwards so we'll just write idx plus one to continue off from the next index if this is the case we'll simply return true right and if uh, this does not return true in any of the cases all you need to do is first replace this value again with uh, the original value that this had we replace that value with the pound sign so that we don't explore this node again in the current dfs so we already performed the dfs we didn't find any matches now we need to replace this back with its original value so i'll simply write board i comma j and i'll write this equal to temp so we uh, restore the original value back and return false because we did not find a match at any of the positions right so this should be it and if we run this code this should give us a correct answer all right so there is an error all right so i assigned a string so this basically means i cannot assign a string i need to assign a character right so this should work now right this returns true let's submit that and this returns 44 milliseconds faster than 96.62 percent and the memory usage is as uh, is also faster better than 82 percent of the submissions that is pretty good and this is how you solve this problem now a few improvements that you might want to make in the code quality will be to not really make any replacements in the original array itself because it's not considered a very good practice to modify the given array or the given matrix so you could actually maintain uh, another hash map or maybe another visited matrix which will keep track of the current elements that you are visiting and you can mark such things in that matrix and just add that condition here in the first if condition you can do that uh, it will improve the code quality but that will bring down your space uh, space efficiency as well you'll have to use uh, n squared extra space so yeah you need to keep that in mind so these are just like trade-offs that you can measure and you can actually look into it or, or how the uh, current use case is better suited so right now i simply replace the uh, characters in the current matrix itself you can actually create another visited matrix or a visited counter to keep track of that whatever you prefer but this is how you solve this question and i hope you learned something new and if you like this video, hit the thumbs button. If you want to see more content, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to just support me in any other way, just comment down below. And I will see you in the next video.